What's up guys? So I got a quick uh, quick one I want to do here. I got this uh, O2 Yukon. Uh, I don't believe it's a Denali, just the regular Yukon uh, SLT or SLE, whatever it is. Never mind that. Um, love using my new toys. I got the I got the U scope, lab scope, single channel lab scope. Got this a few weeks ago from ASE Wave. Uh, been trying to use it just kind of here and there it's always one of those things you get a new tool and uh, you know the work dries up on it you buy a specialty tool and that work stops coming in um, but you know I you use this for anything you know you guys using lab scopes uh, you know I find I find ways to use this for everything um, but basically I got this one set up here um, came in for a check engine light they got a pass in missions brought it in threw the scanner on it Pulled up a couple codes. I've been working on it for a little bit here. I'm getting ready to put the U-scope on it. I think I'm on the right track. I just wanted to show you guys, take you through it. We got the uh, PO122. It's a throttle body code, throttle position code. We got the PO440 and 443. These are the two codes that I'm working on, but I have a feeling now that this uh, throttle position sensor might be tied into it. So I'll just take you guys through the steps, kind of what I did. Um, get the scope broken out, hook it up. Um, great scope, pretty much comes, uh, you guys looking into one of these, uh, ASEWave.com, get yourself one of these. They think they run about 160, but they come with uh, the scope. You get a charger in there. You get the leads. You get some back probes. The instruction manual, they give you a little SD card. Um, the little probe wire connector great kit I mean it's you know something small instead of breaking out the four channel you know when you're just testing one channel I'm using this for other things right now so you know don't really want it over there it's all wet and everything I don't want my uh, super expensive scanner sitting in water or getting dropped over there so sometimes I just like to kind of use separate tools here but let me get this thing hooked up to this thing I'll kind of step you guys through it and show you what's going on where I'm at right now all right guys so I got my little area I've been working in here in the corner. Uh, got my little floodlight hooked up as a hood light. Something quick and easy. But I pulled the cover off. I smoke tested it first. Got the smoke machine here. It was holding, no leaks. Check the gas cap, normal stuff when you're checking the, you know, checking for a leak or EVAP system problem. Uh, definitely hold in. Gas cap looks good. Charcoal canister looks good. No rusted lines, no leaks back there. The vent valve I did test, it is holding and, and closing. I did a circuit test on that. I, pull, I pulled the purge off because it was all dirty. So you start to look in there and make sure there's not dust in there. But it is sealing. I did a bench test on this. The purge is working. And then I seen the wire. Uh, this car had came from another shop and I seen the wire here. And I know on some of these they have issues where the wire's breaking the pigtail. So I'm thinking, okay, well, that was taken care of. What's going on here? Everything else is testing fine. So I back probed it and uh, stopped real quick because I want to see, I want to get this lab scope out and take you guys through this thing. We'll get set up and uh, show you guys how this uh, one channel scope works. All right, guys. So I got you guys set up there on the tripod. But uh, basically, I charge it all up. It's charged up, like I said, I've used it a couple times. Uh, but I want to get set up here. So basically, let me get my leads ready get untangled here. If you guys hear beeping, that's just the, the jump pack I got on here. The, this car needs a battery too, but I want to diagnose this check engine light issue for them first. So hook up my ground. And basically, power it up. I'll take you guys through a more detailed how to use this thing, maybe in another video, but I got it just basic setups here. Um, we're going to shoot it up maybe five volts and then get that set on. Well, there, let's see. Try to hold that up. I got this thing back probed here with my little uh, little alligator and a little needle on there. You could buy these, but you can make these things too. Super cheap, easy to back probe. Just a small little pin there so you're not damaging the connectors. So I'll get this thing hooked up on here. The kit comes with back probes too, but I'm, I'm actually going through the front here. Now basically on this circuit, you're just looking for pretty much power and ground. 
the uh, PCM pretty much controls this purge valve to open and close. So we hook it up, I think this is the ground side here. See if we got a ground. Yeah, we got we got a ground there. So you can see it's at zero. Now on this side, we'll be looking for 12 volts or whatever the battery runs, maybe 11 volts because the battery is dead. But you can see, let me slow this down a little bit. You can see we're not there. Hold on, let me switch it back. Let me get this tracer down to 12 volts here. So it'll kind of give us where we're at. All right, so there's 12 volts. So, so right now we got the voltage we're looking for. I'm gonna actually slow this down a little more. I hope that's in screen there. Now, if I grab a hold of these wires and shake them around, you can see it jumping around. So we clearly have an open source problem here. Look, now we're now we're getting closer to 11 volts. The jump pack says 11.3. So now that I shook it around a little bit, look, if you push on the wires, drops it back down to zero. I don't know if you guys are picking that up. So just a quick test here with the U-scope. You can see where we at there. So right there we're at we're at about where we need to be. But then I grab a hold of the wires here and shake them around, you can see it drops. So we clearly got a wiring issue here going to the, probably the PCM or the ECU, whatever you guys want to call it. But yeah, shaking that around, you can see it's dropping here. So that's, that's the guy's problem. But great tool. Great tool just for a quick test. You know, obviously there's other ways of doing it, but like I said, I've been trying to use this thing as much as I can. I'll do another video on kind of more uh, advanced, you know, get starting on it for you guys, maybe just getting into lab scopes and things like that. You know, there's, there's things that I could probably use this on that I don't. There's always five or six ways to diagnose a car, but scopes has been my go-to tool lately, so. All right, guys. So now that we know we got an open circuit problem, I'm gonna, it's a shame too because these guys were probably on the right track unless maybe they replaced this because a lot of times they break inside the the pigtail here they'll start to corrode and crack right here you will get bad connections but we're gonna cut this thing back and see if we can find a break in the line cut all this back here see what they got going on here maybe go down down a little further I have a feeling it's down there and it might be it might have something to do with our same issue maybe maybe it's the bundle of wires might have to do with the same issue with the throttle position sensor too. So we'll get you guys set up so you guys can see me open up this uh, wire loom. All right guys, I got my little sewing kit loom opener. Try to see if I could cut this back a little bit without hurting the wires here. This thing works pretty great. Cut all that tape off without cutting into the wires. I'm not expecting to see any breaks in the new wire, but definitely down there where they start to bunch up. I just want to get all this tape out of the way, maybe shorten this a little bit. I don't know why they left it so long. Or I might need to use the wires to go down in there more. You hate using a razor blade because you risk cutting into the wire and damaging the wire. But I can't get in here to see anything. I'm not really seeing any issue yet. It's got to be 
it's got to be down further. And this throttle position sensor is in the same little pack here. I'm hoping to find some corrosion. Let's see if I get this unplugged. Bingo, guys. I think I found it. And I'll be checking this one, too. This one's the throttle position sensor. I'll probably scope those, too, in a minute here. But you can see... <clears throat> let, me get you guys, let me get you guys close up. All right. All right, so here's our uh, purge connector. You can see the long wire they put on there with some buck connectors. But now that I got this opened up, you can see, which one is this? The power has got a definite break in it. You can see it didn't break through. Let me try to get you guys a better view here. Come on, focus. Right there, right there where my finger's at, you could see it's, it didn't rip the wire through, so it wasn't a rodent problem, but you could see that's uh, definitely a bad connection. I'm going to give this a little tug and see if it breaks off. Let's see. Boom. Barely pulled on that to get this camera to focus, but there's our problem there. And I'm actually noticing on the ground side... It's got the same issue, probably where it makes the turn coming up, where they bundle it all together in the loom, and they make the turn to come up on the side of the intake here. Just with the heat and everything, wears it out over time, movement, and then just so brittle it breaks. And look at that, pulled that one right off too. So, I'm pretty satisfied with that, knowing that'll fix those two codes, the PO440, PO443 for purge malfunction coming from the computer that's usually for the PO443 if you guys are getting that code I would pretty much go right to the purge on those check your wiring check the purge do a bench test on the purge make sure it's opening maybe command the scanner on and uh, do bi-directional scanning on and you know make sure you hear it clicking and all that stuff pretty easy on these uh, GM vehicles but that's it repair these wires tape up the loom clean everything back up all right, guys, so real quick to address this PO122 code, um, low voltage. I always like to, uh, you know, address the matter at hand, what I'm working on. So I, you know, finished up fixing up the, uh, the purge valve wiring, and then I started to work on this uh, throttle position code. I figure, check these wires before I go button this thing up. You know, and I start to look at these wires here, and I know, you know, blue... Blue, I want to say, is uh, power or signal. Blue is signal. Then we got your ground coming from the PCM. And then the gray one, which looks burnt, it looks yellow. Um, so I started looking into that, is the um, is power supplied by the PCM. So you got your signal, ground, and 5-volt reference from the PCM. Um, so I got the U-scope out again, and I started to kind of look down the harness to see if I could get any movement here. Oh, I picked it up there, there we go. I wasn't able to get that on camera a second ago, but you could just see there, shaking the wire around, how it jumped on the scan tool, uh, on the lab scope. So I started to look down here, and you could see I got the same issue, where was it, right here, with the bend, probably where it comes up. You could see it's real soft here. You know, you try to straighten it out, and it just won't there's a kink there and I think we got some corrosion in there or maybe some wire breakage in there and that would uh, 
that would go along with this code as uh, low voltage because this is the voltage wire here coming from the PCM, the 5 volt. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this wire and see if uh, I see any wire breaking or anything like that. Or maybe give it a pull test. Let's see if we can get this one on camera. No, it's pretty tight. So I'm just going to open it up and uh, see if there's any breakage there. If not, if I don't see anything, I'll just cut it, you know, cut the bat off, make sure there's no uh, corrosion in there. And then just maybe hook it back together, solder it back together with some clean wire on there and see and then maybe do a retest but I was glad I was able to get that on camera it was doing it for me and then I started the camera up a minute ago and I couldn't get it to do it but I don't know if you guys caught that when I had it probed in there well the probe fell out now let's see get the probe back in there and you can see I definitely have voltage it just might be too low for the PCM that's what's throwing the code it's not within range so, do I got the right one probe there? No. Hold on here. Let me probe the right one here. There we go. So I got the... This is the one coming from the PCM. Here, let me see if I can get in there without destroying the terminal here. I got the back probe in there. There we go. Let's give it a shake test again. Yeah, and it's just... Very solemnly... You get it to do it. Let's see, I can't get both these in, in frame here. I'm gonna put you guys on the U scope here. See if, oh, there it was again. So you can see it right there. You can see it starts to drop. Let's see if I could zoom in on that. Up. Oh, never mind. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open this up. See if I see corrosion and repair that. See if we can knock out that uh, PO 122 code too. So, but I just wanted to give you guys a show at that. See where I was at. So just a quick retest guys, got my loom all taped up, always try to make it look like you were never here, clean everything up, got it back probed on the power, you can see my trace is at uh, about 12 volts, I'm sitting at about maybe 10 or 11, but that's because my, my battery's only at about 10 volts, but do a quick shake test on it, no drop off, fix the short, and then I got a good ground too. You always want to just double check your ground. Ground stays at zero. So, quick, uh, quick U scope usage. Call this video tools in action, but you know it's uh, just one of those things where you know make it quick and easy. Obviously, you could test those wires other ways, but you know I've been getting into lab scopes, using them a lot more recently. Um, especially I picked this one up because you know you don't want to always lug around the big bulky uh, you know four channel and things like that or break out the big Pico scope and bust out the laptop and everything like that this little uh, handheld U scope you guys check it out if you guys haven't seen these things great time saver I mean you know finding those bad wires the shorts things like that testing your circuitries use those U scopes so if you're not utilizing these you need to check into it. It's not that bad. Like I said, I'll try to do a future video on uh, once I get to learn this tool a little bit more and kind of how to set it up, how to use it, and things like that. But quick and easy, pocket, pocket style uh, diag. But just wanted to make a quick one here. Clean up those wires, tape up the loom, make clean up my mess, and uh, price this thing out. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget about the tool giveaway, and we will catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.